Hello everyone, welcome back to the Earth Tones Girl channel. My name is Denise and I think this is episode 84. I have no idea. <laughs> I really don't think it matters. <laughs> And I think I say that every episode. Welcome back, everybody. I am so, so glad that you're here today. Um, in today's episode, I'm going to talk about some socks that I have on needles. I have two whips to share with you, some books to share, um, a little mini book review, which is actually going to be a prize for the Cal. I have Cal news. There's lots of stuff. So I'm hoping this episode is not too long, but you know what? It is what it is and I've got lots to share and I can't wait to get started. So let's jump right in. <laughs> Hello everybody. So welcome, welcome. I'm so happy that you all are here with me today. It's been about, I don't know, a little over two weeks since my last episode, so I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> Uh, if you're noticing, it's the light here. I, I, there's a couple of, I'm gonna just, I'm rambling today. I'm a little rambly. I tried writing my notes down, but there's so much I want to say. I feel like I'm going to be tripping over myself. So just bear with me. Um, I bought a lighting kit. Yay. <laughs> so the lighting may change off and on in the next couple of episodes until I get the formula, so to speak, that really works well. But I'm trying to be get a system going where it doesn't matter what time of the day I'm recording because I feel like that limits me so much with so much with when I can be here if I'm always waiting for a sunny or bright day. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited about that. I have a kit. Yay. So this should stay consistent. Let's see. Um, what else do I want to talk about? So thank you so much to everybody who left episode left comments on the last episode. Um, that was just, it was so wonderful to hear and validating and reassuring, uh, to hear from so many of you, um, in the last episode about the Ravelry group. So, so comforting and reassuring. Uh, I, to know that I am not the only one that struggles with that platform. Um, as I said again, I really did open it for non-Instagram users and some of them are happy with it, some of them are not, some of them just choose to be here. So, unfortunately, I wish there were a, as, as some, a couple of people said in the comments, I wish there were one single platform that sort of pleases everybody, but I just don't think that that exists. Someone's going to have issues or problems. I may have issues and problems with, with various platforms. So we will do our best with what we have. So thank you so much again to everybody that left comments about that. Um, and thank you for being here and sharing a lot of your book reviews and things like that in the comments. The only problem with that is you're limited then with sharing pictures of your socks if you're not on, if you choose not to post in Ravelry and you're not on social media. So it's participatory. This, the, the, the Cal is for me to see what you're doing, for all of us to see what each other is, are doing. Um, but it's also just for yourself. It's just something, a way of challenging yourself or, um, combining your reading with your, with your sock knitting. So I think for the most part, it's working. So let's just go with that. So um, so let's talk about the cowl a little bit more. I have decided to extend it. Oh! <laughs> I am having so much fun. Granted, I know I'm predominantly on Instagram, but I'm having so much fun watching the excitement from everyone and seeing everyone's socks and the, and the matching and the pairing and just the joy that this hearing from people about the joy that this knit along has brought to them and, and what it's brought to me. I have read, I'm plowing through audiobooks. I've, and I keep, I use the word read. Let me just clarify that for a second. I, as by default, I say read or I'm reading or what I'm, what I've read, what I'm reading, but I really listen. I, I'm not physically turning the pages of a book. I am fully plugged in and doing it audiobooks exclusively, audiobooks exclusively. So I just wanted to clarify that because I even get questions from people. Well, how do you hold your book open while you read? I can read. I'm grateful for the skill. I can read and knit at the same time. I, I fortunately don't have to look at my hands. Um, and when I do that on the rare occasion, uh, if I'm using a reference book for something or 
just even not knitting at all, if I'm just cooking, I tend to use a recipe book stand. So I will link to a couple of those in the um, description box under this video, because that's a frequently, frequently recurring question of how do you manage your book while you are, um, while you're knitting. So again, I'll link to some of those in the description box. Um, for the sharp eyed among you, I'm fidgeting with my hair because I just cut it. <laughs> Uh, I just got a haircut, um, my gosh, this week, last weekend, I, I decided to just neaten it up a little bit. It was just looking kind of messy. So I'm feeling a little pretty, a little fussy today, if that's okay to say out loud. <laughs> so anyway, back to the cowl, decided to extend it. I am so excited about that. It will now run until the end of May. It will finish on May 31st, which I believe... Hold on, let's see. I think it's a Friday. Hold on, let's look at the... Yes, May 31st, it's a Friday. So it feels so neat and tidy that it finishes on a Friday. And uh, I do believe that the summer sock cowl that's hosted by Kay Litton, who's the crazy sock lady, I believe her summer camp, summer sock camp starts I think it's June 1st. So I, you may be able to just sort of slide from one knit along into the other. There are lots of knit alongs going on right now. Uh, there's also a shorty sock knit along that's being hosted by Emma C Makes. Um, that is her Instagram handle as well as her Instagram handle. I mean, Instagram handle as well as her YouTube handle. Um, you know what, I will link to all of these. I'm just gonna make a note to myself. Um, uh, summer camp and shorty sock uh cal both cows yeah i will link to both of those in the description box so there's so much sock knitting going on uh and it's as the weather gets warmer it is so gorgeous here today i'm gonna put in a little footage of me under cherry blossom tree um and some cherry blossom tree footage they are my second favorite lilacs are my first um I like roses, you know, I love them all, but there's something about cherry blossoms that take me back to my college days. They were all over my college campus. They are in full bloom right now. And the beauty is it has not rained here in a really long time. So they're really staying on the trees and they're so full and beautiful. But anyway, I digress again. As you can tell, I've got a little, I'm a little all over the place today. Um, Let's get back to the cowl. I decided to extend it until May 31st, which is a Friday, and basically just keep going, keep going. I will, uh, for those of you that are on the Ravelry group and may not see this on Instagram, I did a poll on Instagram asking uh, if anybody would be interested in extending it, and 90, I think 94% of the people that replied said yes, keep it going. So uh, that will continue. I will post a message in the Ravelry group to let them know for anybody that's not watching here with me today. Um, yeah, so just keep keep going. Keep sock knitting, keep reading, um, consuming, taking in, enjoying, whatever words you want to use for your books. Um, I'm so excited to continue. So before I get into whips, I just wanna say one thing because I think something interesting happened in the last episode. Um, I was describing, the, I think I was talking in the last episode about The Women and by Kristen Hanna and Wayward, um, Emily Hart, Amelia Hart, I think is her name. And I was trying to be very respectful with what I said about the book, The Women, because it is such a challenging topic. I was trying to be very respectful of that generation and people that experienced that firsthand um, when sharing my feelings about the book. And I chose my words carefully, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I think I did an okay job. When I talked about wayward, um, there was someone that, that said in the comments that hearing my description of what happens in the book, I'm being even more censored right now, that what, hearing about what happens in the book was very triggering for them. And I sincerely tried my best to be as, to give a clear warning 
and really let people know that the book was really uncomfortable without being graphic, but to this person, I was too graphic. So I apologized to her in the comments and, and her response was, well, she, I said that it was not my intention to offend or hurt or make anyone uncomfortable. And she said, well, I know that, you know, however, so please don't take anything that I say on this podcast about books personally. I am not trying to upset anyone or hurt anyone's feelings or trigger anyone or whatever word applies. That is not my intention. This channel is not becoming a booktube. However, I do want to share more about my love of books here on the channel and talk about them a lot more. And there will be times just being for warned is forearmed. There will be times when some of the descriptions and, and things that I share about the books may be intense, depending on what the books are. So I will try going forward to just do a little warning, warning, if I'm about to talk about a book, it's intense. So you might want to pause the video now or fast forward or whatever. I will try to do warnings. Um, and there's times when I may genuinely forget to do a warning. So just putting it out there, my intention with sharing my love of books um, that has really, really been strengthened by this knit along is not to hurt anyone's feelings. It's just to share because this is, this is tip of the iceberg, my collection um, that's down the hall, that's downstairs, that's all over this house. Books are really huge for me. The written word is really huge. And I just want to share that with all of you as well as my making. So to the person who said that they were triggered, I do again publicly apologize to you um, and hope that you will find book reviews less so going forward. Let's all pause for a moment <laughs> and then we'll get into some current books and socks. <laughs> Time for some sock knitting, everyone. <laughs> so my, I'm a little, again, I feel like this episode's slightly scattered, but it's okay. It, I hope that you're all here for it. So what I did, I was going through my sash and um, after finishing, so I finished in my last episode, I think I talked about the little village of book lovers, finished it, beautiful, it's, I, briefly, it was really, really a unique book on the way the voices of the characters were shared in the story. Really unique, loved it so much. And the pink faded socks are what I um, finished, I knit for that book. Now, fast forward, I'm waiting on a new book release by Kate Thompson, and it's sort of a, not quite a part two, but another story that takes place during the same time period. And that was, um, the book I'm referring to before is The Little Wartime Library by Kate Thompson. And that book is right here. Hold on. So this is the one that I read and absolutely loved it. I read this before the Cal started and, um, Oh my gosh, had to have a physical copy because I loved it so much. And she was putting out, like I said, a sort of a, another story, again, based in the same time period. And that is called The Wartime Book Club, Kate Thompson. And that is set on the Isle of Jersey, which is part of the Channel Isles. Uh, I believe it's Jersey and Guernsey. Please, anybody that's from that part of the world, if I am incorrect, please correct me. And... It, I, I was waiting like a cat at a mouse hole for this book. It came, it published on April 9th. Congratulations, Kate, if you happen to be watching. And I was waiting for that book. So I wanted something in between, like a little filler until that book came out. Uh, and I was also looking at socks that I had on needles, old whips. So I just pulled out an old whip and finished that up. And they are these. <laughs> Oh, let's take a look. These have been on needles for, oh my gosh, 
just shy, had been on needles for just shy of a year. So I just finished these and I started these, as I said, almost a year ago when I was listening to the Silo series by Hugh, uh, Hugh Howie. Um, I've talked about that already here on the channel. Um, it's the Silo series. It is a sci-fi future dystopia style trilogy. Um, really, really well written. Very unique. Oh my gosh, like blew me away. Unique take on the whole dystopia fiction genre. Um, very unique take on it. And if you know the books... For those who've read them, you'll you may catch on quickly as to why this colorway was so appropriate. It was the story takes place in a silo, so there's they're in this very. For those of you that know what it's, it's a very big, tall tube, and it's interesting how there are little. There's a staircase that runs through the center of the silo, and there was something about this colorway that really spoke to me and I thought it was just perfect. So these were knit for that book even before the cowl. So I've been matching my books to my <laughs> my my socks to my books sort of I guess unconsciously for a or consciously for a long time now. And I love these. So this colorway is actually based on a book collection. So must by mustache yarn. Mustache yarn did a must read I think it was collection. I think it was called the Must Read Collection or the Read Collection. I'll, I'll put everything in the show notes for you. And this particular colorway is Ready Player One. For those of you that know that book, I don't remember the author, but the book is Ready Player One and she dyed this colorway for that book. And again, I just thought it was perfect for the Silo series. So here it is. I love it. I love the gray as the background color. It is just... Ugh. And if you've never knit with mustache yarn, it's, it is so, it's delicious. It, <laughs> I can't think of another word. The yarn is just, when you've got that perfect pairing of yarn and needles, and I, I've talked about that in my No Fear Sock Knitting class, um, not all needles work with all types of yarn. Uh, and I'll, if you want more on that, I suggest going back and watching, but there's times when the needle may be almost too sharp so it catches in the yarn and then there's times when the needle may be almost too um the point may be too rounded I don't want to say dull because it's not dull but it may be too rounded for a particular yarn and it, it sometimes knitters think that the problem is them but it's really the pairing of the yarn and the needle so for this particular yarn, it is, it is a 75-25 blend, and I use um, a high a high a sharp, a 2.25 millimeter high a high a sharp, and there's a reason why they're called high a high a sharps. They're extremely sharp. I mean, almost hurt your finger sharp. <laughs> and, um, but that said, this particular yarn is very fine. This fingering weight is very, very fine, and that needle with this yarn, chef's kiss, it is just... <laughs> Oh, butter. It is just butter. They fly off the needles. So that is what I did here. So I'm finished with these. Um, oh, and the house phone is ringing. I don't really know why. So I'm going to pause for a moment and see what's going on. <laughs> so sorry, guys. Why did I even answer the phone? <laughs> anyway, okay, I'm here. Um, so don't even know what I was talking about. Um, I just got completely distracted. So yes, finish my socks. My book finally came out on April 3rd, April 9th, April 9th, and it is the Wartime Book Club. And I will put a picture of that right here for you uh, because I haven't been able to get a copy of the book yet. Um, but I will put a picture here. And the socks that I'm working on for that. Oh my goodness. Can we just can we just talk about these for one second? Oh. Okay, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to do this so that you can see the book cover next to <laughs> the socks. <sighs> oh my goodness. I don't know what to talk about first. I love my you guys know you all know I love my sock knitting so much. But every now and then a colorway comes along. Excuse me, a colorway comes along that just rocks my world, and this is it. I don't even feel like, okay, that's pretty good. 
I almost don't feel like the camera is really doing it justice. It is just, oh my gosh, it's so gorgeous. Just wow. This is, there it is. This colorway is, hold on, oh, I know I'm going to say this wrong. It's by Tiny Human Knits, um, and it's part of a, an, a collection she did based on an artist. So it is Mucha or Muka, M-U-C-H-A, Fruits, F-R-U-I-T-S. And this is on her 80, yes, I'm old and I have to move the thing away from my face. <laughs> um, it's an 80-20 blend, 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. And I always buy her sock sets, 50 gram sock sets. I always buy them in 50s. She does sell them in hundreds, but I prefer to buy them in 50s because then I can perfectly match the stripes and I don't have to finish one and do the other or wind off two balls. It's just easier for me to do it this way. So if for the sharp eyed among you, if you follow me on Instagram, I had joined these together and I was knitting them two at a time, separated them. Um, you don't have to, but for the sake of carrying it around and, and it being a little bit more portable, um, I separated it and I was doing them, uh, one at a time. So once the heels are, once all of the gussets stitches have been decreased, then I'm going to put them back on one needle and I'll just keep going. So, um, I mean, I don't even have any words for how much I love this colorway. It is just gorgeous and there's something about experiment with your yarn with with the companies and the dyers that you buy from there's something about this particular base that is it's an 80 20 base but I've used other 80 20 bases that don't feel like this um they're wonderful and I love them but there's something about this one Laura, if you're watching, I don't know what base this is, but wow is all I can say. And I know that the dye also... Hi, sweetie. What's up? Okay, I'm going to pause one more time. <laughs> Sorry, another interruption. <laughs> My son is home today, so he just had a question. Um, yarn bases. Uh, it is. It is just my train of thought oh my gosh menopause brain I cannot think of a thing um so yes it is just amazing I know she had this colorway my dog is barking I hope he stops I know she had this colorway in her shop I've had this for maybe a year a little bit less I don't know if she has any more of this in her shop or if she will be dying anymore but um yeah, I will link to her down below. That is definitely a question for her, not for me. I really don't know. Um, so that is a current whip. Um, what else am I doing right now? So I'm still, even though I, so anyway, let's talk about the book for a moment. Um, the Wartime Book Club. Started the book and the socks at the same time and plowed through the book. It was so touching and it, uh, it's set during historical fiction world war ii set on the isle of jersey which is part of the channel isles as i said and it's about the german occupation of those isle islands during the war and it's really a touching story centered around books um the people on the island uh, form a book club, and it has a similar feel to the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. That is another book. I can't, I'm blanking on the author. If you haven't read that one, oh, oh that is, oh my gosh, it, that will get you. One of my top 10 is that particular book. But this one, I was a little like, mm, is it gonna be similar? Not at all. Same, similar setting, similar level of suffering, and certain references are similar, but the story itself is so different. So, so, so different and so touching. That is all I'm going to say. It has challenging moments based, as you, I'm sure you can figure out, from the setting and the time period. It has very challenging moments rather challenge, very hard moments, actually. That's all I'm going to say. Wonderful story. I loved 
B and Grace so much. And what I found really touching is there's a reference to this book, um, to Clara and Ruby, who are in this book, there's a reference to them in the other book. And it's just so, so great. And Kate Thompson at the end of the book does a really lengthy um, discussion about historical references, people that she spoke to on the island. Um, she shares her research with you and it is so fascinating. I found it completely fascinating and, and almost as good as the book, it, it, as the story, as the fictional story. So, so, so good. She has links and references and f reading, more reading if you're interested. It was just so well done. I mean, she even goes into the food that they ate and how you know, rationing was a, was a huge problem and, and they had to be so creative. So it was just such a great piece of historical fiction and research all in one book. So highly recommend that one as well. And what else? I am, so anyway, finish the book, one, two, three. As you can see, I did not finish the socks. So I'm still knitting the socks, but I'm fluctuating or going back and forth between those socks and this sock. I don't think I've shared this here yet. Um, and if I did, it's okay, we'll see it again. So I'm also working on this sock, which is, let's look at that. It is another helical sock, but this time I'm using a solid and a self-striping. So this is what I'm using this time. This colorway uh, is by Valkyrie Fibers. The name of this colorway is Harmony, which is part of a series that she was doing. Again, I'll link to everything in the description box for you. Um, but yeah, this is what I am working on. So this is a 75, 25 blend and this is an opal just a white opal solid so that's i've paired these two together and i am striping this beauty oh my gosh just amazing i mean you see the self striping it's doing the helical i it is just amazing and recently i did the i picked up stitches i don't know if you can see in there picked up stitches for the heel flap and I was able to keep the striping going. And there was a really, really great um, tutorial. It's not a tutorial on how to knit socks, absolutely not. It's just a very short tutorial on how to arrange the two yarn, the two yarns or two strands, how to arrange them so that you can knit the, the heel flap. And the way that you do this is a click different than the other pair of helical socks that I knit when you were doing where I did a short row heel. So it's all about positioning the yarn so that you can keep the striping going. And for those of you patiently waiting, um, it's just been a really... So I talked about March being really hard. <laughs> March was hard. April has been frighteningly busy. Um, just want my life to slow down. It's been so, so busy. So um, I do, I'm still very excited to do a tutorial. I will not say when that is coming, but it will happen um, because I wanna do a comparison between helical knitting with the short row heel and with the heel flap and gusset. So it's gonna take me a minute to get all the samples ready and get everything, camera, blah, 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 get it all done, but I will get that out to you. Um, so yeah, I think that's it for my works in progress. I'm also, so what am I listening to now? Finished the Wartime Book Club, and I'm currently listening to, I'll put a picture of it here for you, The Echo, the Echo of Old Books. Hold on. The, uh, here it is. The Echo of Old Books by Barbara Davis. As you can see the light from my phone. That is the cover. I don't know if it will show up. It's kind of blown out, but um, that is the cover of the book, The Echo of Old Books by Barbara Davis. And it is really another unique one. I, I keep finding these gems. <laughs> this one is about a bookseller who 
sort of present day. I think it takes place in maybe the 90s, um, maybe 80s, 80s, 90s, um, relatively present day. And a bookseller who, secondhand bookseller, who um, comes across these two books that seem to be linked to each other and are telling two sides of a story. There's no author, there's no publisher, there's nothing um, for her to research the origins of these books. Um, they almost seem like journals and it's the mystery surrounding these two books that is the story. Now, let's talk about narrated books for a moment uh, with audiobooks. It, I talked about this in an episode ages ago. There is a huge difference between an audiobook that is read to you and an audiobook that is performed for you. The first audiobook I ever listened to was the Harry Potter books, all seven, and they were narrated by Jim Dale. They were not just narrated, they were performed, acted out, so richly brought to life that I became very, very spoiled and wanted all books to sound like that. I just, I kept saying to myself, why can't Jim Dale narrate everything? <laughs> Impossible. Um, but then somewhere out there, somewhere, Instagram, somewhere, someone made that differentiation between read to and performed. And I thought, oh, okay. If my mind can wrap itself around this book is being performed, this book is being read, I will enjoy the book that much more. This particular book is being there's three, three narrators, um, and it's sort of being performed in a way because you're getting these, these different voices, but the voices of the characters in the two books almost feels um, slightly, felt slightly dramatic to me, like overdone, like they were playing it just a little too much. But then I sort of thought, okay, okay, give it, give it a minute because it kind of turned me off, I'm not gonna lie. But I thought, you know what, give it a minute. This, this definitely sounds like it has promise. And you know what? I pushed past the voices and the story is so interesting. And I think there's something really dark that's coming, but, but like not bad dark, like interesting dark. Um, there's a lot more to this story than you think. And I am loving it, absolutely loving it. And I thought, well, maybe I would try to find yarn to match, but you know what? I'm just going to keep sock knitting and keep listening at this point. So, um, that is my current read. Uh, I also finished <laughs> lots of reading. Um, I also finished the book hatchet with my son. He loves to be read to. And there's times when I, I say to him, you know, I want him to hear other voices. So we listen to audiobooks together and I get a lot of them from Libby, which is the free, um, it's the audiobook or the book borrowing system for the New York Public Library. Actually, I don't know if it's just New York. I think it's the, the library system, period. Correct me if I'm wrong. And we listened to Hatchet by Gary Paulson and we loved it. He was, my son is nine and he was riveted to this, like edge of his seat listening and and then I say, okay, it's time for bed. We have to stop. And he's like, well, what's going to happen? And like, he was just so into it and loving it so, so, so much. So we finished that together. So I kind of consider that as another book I've consumed. And um, we are now listening to, we just started the Harry Potter books together. So we're in Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. We are now in book one. And same thing. He's loving it, but he's also getting that Jim Dale experience. Um, Stephen Fry read the English or European versions of the books. Um, and Jim Dale does the American versions. Just amazing, 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 amazing. So that is what we're listening to. Um, that's what I've listened to, what I'm currently listening to, what I've been knitting. And I just want to talk about the cal again for just a moment. It is, as I said, participatory. So I'm not really giving prizes every month per se, but I do have um, copies of a really, really incredible book that I just want to talk about for a minute. Um, this book is 
I saw that this person was putting out a book and I got very, very excited. Um, I haven't met her in person, but we've been on a panel together and we've done a thing together. So we've, we've been introduced um, and we talked to each other a little bit on Instagram. So she was putting out a book and I think everybody was sort of holding their breath for it and it came out and I missed the pre-order. So I ordered it from three other places. <laughs> seeing which one would get to me first. And I figured it doesn't matter if there's extra copies because I'll just give them away. And it is this book. The Sock Project, colorful, cool socks to, oh my goodness, what is with this phone today? Martha, I have no idea. Oh, you guys, I'm so sorry. Hold on. Don't people know that I'm podcasting? What the heck? <laughs> anyway, continuing. Uh, it is The Sock Project, Colorful Cool Socks to Knit and Show Off by Summer Lee. It has sock knitting guru Summer Lee shares her knitting secrets for creating all shapes and sizes of socks. The book includes 25 patterns, five different heels, cuff down, toe up, and tips on sizing and fit. And here it is. It is an amazing, amazing book. It is an incredible reference. There is so much so much information in here. The colors of this book, the colors in the book are just beautiful. Um, let me try to find a really colorful page here for you. I mean, the pictures of the socks, I mean, if the cover, the cover should definitely, is a huge indicator of all the color and beautifulness that is in this book. It really is amazing. It's a great reference. And I have a lot of sock knitting books, a lot. And this is a really, really good one. So. Um, congratulations, Summer. Summer has her own YouTube channel. Um, I strongly suggest you go over and take a look. She is so fun and herself and just whimsical and funny and just really, really amazing as a person and also as a designer and maker. So I will be giving away the whole point is I have two extra copies. <laughs> All three of my copies came in. I have two extra copies and I will be giving away um, two, a copy to one copy on Instagram and one copy. I will just pick a random winner from the Ravelry group and you will get a copy of this book. So stay tuned for that. I am really, really excited to share this with all of you. Um, this is also available right now on Amazon. It is available at local bookstore. Look at bookstores, Amazon, and your local yarn shop. I suggest purchasing from your local yarn shop if you can and support the small businesses. Um, yep, so I will be giving away a copy of this. Again, Summer, congratulations. It's a wonderful book. There's a lot in here, you guys, a lot. So please check that out. Oh, what am I wearing today? I am wearing my... Sheep t-shirt, no blinking light today. <laughs> this t-shirt has the names of sheep in the sheep. So I don't know if you can see some of those. There's Corydale and there's all kinds of things in there. Yes, I'm putting my chest in your face. Hope you don't mind, I'm showing you the t-shirt. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think that is my episode today, everybody. I'm so Grateful to all of you for being here and for watching. Um, keep reading, keep knitting. Ah, the weather is warm. Take your knitting and reading outside. Ah, just, it's just, this light is just amazing, guys. It dipped maybe once. Did you see that? It's been so consistent. I'm loving this. <laughs> so, oh, and I do have to thank um, Taylor who is Wool Needles Hands because it was her recommendation on a behind the scenes episode that she did and she recommended the lighting. So I'm very grateful to her. One thing if you're, one thing I've, I love about people in the knitting community or in the making community is so many, some are not, and that's their choice, no judgments. So many are so willing to share their experiences and how they do things. Um, how they record their podcasts, how they do their lighting, what cameras they're using, uh, what books they like, what what knitting tools they use, and all of these fun things. So, um, I just I'm very very grateful to everybody that's out there that does that. Thank you so so much. And I would like to think that I um, am 
generous with my knowledge and information. If there's ever a question that any of you have, just please feel free to ask. Maybe I'll do a Q&A episode. I've never done that. That might be kind of fun, like an ask me anything and I'll sort through all the questions and answer them. That might be kind of fun to do. Um, so yeah, that is it for today. Thank you. And I will see you all again really, really soon with lots more socks. Oh, last thing, my DK weight sock pattern. It's with the tech editor. I think I am doing a final review on that today, maybe this evening over the, or over the weekend. Um, so that will be out next week. <gasps> I am so excited. So there will be DK weight socks and I will do a whole episode just on the pattern. Um, the pattern will have a section on how to customize the shadow wrap short row heel. So it is coming everybody. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. I'm so excited. The goal was to get it out by the end of April and I think I'm on target. So yay. Um, so stay tuned, lots more coming here and I will see you all again really, really soon. You're all the best. Thank you so much for being a part of my little knitting world. Bye everyone, see you soon. <laughs>